Hi everyone, this is Alan C98, and in this series of videos, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the MQTT protocol and show you how you can use it on devices like the Raspberry Pi, where you can read data from sensors, then publish that data to a cloud service or other devices like another Raspberry Pi or your phone. In this first video, I want to give you a short introduction to MQTT itself. Then I'll give you some very simple demos and show you MQTT in action. In the next video, we'll take a look at using MQTT on Raspberry Pi, and we'll learn how we can read data from sensors on the Pi and publish that data to an MQTT bus or server. So first of all, what is MQTT? MQTT stands for Message Queuing Telemetry Transport. It's a lightweight publish and subscribe messaging service. There are other internet services that you can use to send and receive messages, but the focus on MQTT is on low resources devices like you see commonly used in the internet of things. MQTT is designed to be smaller and take less resources than other internet messaging protocols. So this makes MQTT a great way for small sensors and internet of things devices to communicate with each other or with computers and cloud services. Some of these websites give you a pretty good introduction to MQTT, starting here with this MQTT.org. So here it says MQTT is a machine to machine Internet of Things connectivity protocol. So this is the official MQTT website. And there's a lot of information here. We don't need to go into all of it. Um, over here on the Wikipedia page, we have our definition for MQTT, and it kind of puts it in the hierarchy over here of where it fits in the internet protocol suite. So it's up here in the application layer, not down here like where TCP or UDP are. Um, so it's actually one of the higher level application layers that uses the lower transport layers. And there's a lot of good technical information and background here. Um, Another good website that I like is this page called Awesome MQTT. Again, it gives you some basic definitions, but it gives you a lot of information about um, MQTT itself and some of the different devices that use it. And of course, a lot of the tools and other community resources. So there's plenty of good information out there. But what I was hoping to do is just give you a brief introduction to how I think it's useful on the Raspberry Pi. So why use something like MQTT? First of all, like if you have a Raspberry Pi and some simple sensors on it, it's really easy to read data from the sensor on the Raspberry Pi using a language like Python. So we have here, we're reading temperature data from our program. But then once we have the temperature data, what do we do with it? Do we just display it on the screen? Do we print it out? Do we save it to a disk? Really, to, to work as an Internet of Things device, we want to get that data to another computer. So how do we really get the data to another computer? Well, we can dig out our programming books and we can write some custom Internet communication code where we have the, the program read the temperature data, connect and send that data to another program, which could be on another computer. So to do that, we need to write our socket code, do all kinds of error checking, and we might need to write code for Windows, Mac, Linux, or even Arduino on the smaller devices. And what about if you want to use different programming languages? Well, then you probably have to rewrite or write versions of your custom communication code for different programming languages. It all gets to be kind of like a, a lot of work. And you have to, you know, take care of things like, um, how do I find the address on the internet of each item or each program that needs the data that I'm publishing? Um, and then also, what happens if you want to encrypt your messages? Say you don't want anybody to snoop the data that you're sending. Well, then you have a lot more work to do. So essentially, MQTT takes care of all these problems using a standard way. Um, so essentially, MQTT is a publish and subscribe service. 
and the central part of it is called a broker. It's really just the MQTT server that runs on a computer. And the server is very lightweight compared to, you know, most web servers or database servers. So it can run on a Raspberry Pi and it hardly takes any resources. And what it does is it manages all the connections between the publishers, which are sending device data, and the subscribers, which want to read the device data. So in this example, our program on the Raspberry Pi, we're reading temperature data from a sensor. Then that program just has to publish the data to the MQTT broker, and that's it. It doesn't care where it's going or anything. Likewise, a program over here could be on a different computer, could be on the same computer, doesn't really matter, could be all the way across the internet. It needs to subscribe to some data, and when the data is available, it'll get the data. Um, so in this example, we publish the temperature data. This program says, hey, I'd like to see some temperature data. When it gets the data, when the data is available, it, it gets the data automatically. And again, this program doesn't need to care where it's coming from. It just cares that it's getting the right data. And a little bit more about these messages that are being passed around in MQTT. So an MQTT message is associated with a topic. It's sort of like the address of the message. So in this case, mine is called test slash temperature. That's the name of the topic. Topic can really be just about any text that you want. It's just useful to separate the topic using this slash character to organize it. So for example, I could have Raspberry Pi slash SenseHat slash IMU slash X coordinate if I really want to get, you know, detailed in my organization. Or you can just call it 1234, it doesn't matter, as long as it's a unique name. And then over here on this side, the actual data that goes along with the topic is called the payload. So that's what you're interested in reading, like the actual temperature itself. So the payload can be just about any type of data. It's usually text, I even know if, you know, it could be like a floating point number just um, printed out as text and sent along with the message. But it could also be binary data, or even as we'll see later, more complicated, like JSON formatted messages. So in short, what we're doing is just we're sending data to a topic to the MQTT broker, and we're getting that data, um, any, anyone who subscribes to that particular topic will get the data when it's published. Okay, so that's nice. So we, you can have one publisher and, and one subscriber, but another nice thing about MQTT is it really scales up. So for example, we could have multiple computers here. These are all like a couple of Raspberry Pis and an Arduino. One of them's publishing temperature data. Another one's publishing IMU data, data, data I have here. And another one's publishing GPS data. So they can all publish data to the broker. And then subscribers, there you can have a bunch of different subscribers that are all getting this data. You know, you could have one subscriber get all the different um, published data if you want. So it really doesn't matter. And these brokers can handle a lot of transactions. So you really, for the for real simple stuff of reading data on the Pi and publishing it, it's really pretty good because it'll handle more than enough for you know, a small Internet of Things experiment. And another really nice thing about MQTT is, you know, when we were talking about creating our own custom code, so much stuff has already been done for MQTT to make it easy. So for example, Eclipse, they have this whole Internet of Things um, project where they've built up all this technology, including the MQTT broker that we want to use. It's called Mosquito. Not quite sure why they called it that, but that's one of the most commonly used brokers that we use, and we'll be using that on the Raspberry Pi. And I'll, I actually use that in my demos as well. And in fact, the Eclipse um, organization even has a, a sample 
kind of a test mosquito server set up on the internet. So you can actually use this um, to send messages to and subscribe to other messages. So it's actually pretty neat. But as you'll see in my next video, it's super easy to set up a mosquito server on your Raspberry Pi. Really just one or two lines that you have to type in. Um, and then in addition to all these open source projects, other companies like Amazon, you know, they offer an Internet of Things cloud service. And as you can see, this is all based on MQTT as well, kind of at the heart of their IoT service. So MQTT is a very popular protocol and service. Um, another popular cloud-based service is called Adafruit IO. Now, Adafruit I.O., they have their own custom interface, but they also support MQTT. So you can publish MQTT data, and you, have, you can have your own little um, public account here that you can publish your data and view it on the web browser. And I'll give you a, a quick demo of that as well. They actually have free accounts, which offer a limited number of um, data points that you can publish but it's a pretty neat service. And then when you get into the world of things like home automation, there's open source projects such as this homeassistant.io that'll run on your Raspberry Pi and actually uses MQTT to help you integrate all these home automation devices. So if you're the type of person that wants to set up your house with all this automated stuff, you could use something like this if you wanna do it yourself and kind of organize how all your devices work and keep them on your own your own network rather than using like one of the public services. And then also there's a lot of nice utilities. Like for example, for Windows, there's this thing called an MQTT box. And what this does, it's just a nice easy way to let you um, play around with MQTT, publish messages, subscribe to messages, even for things like um, phones. The Android here, there's this um, app called MQTT Dash. So you can actually subscribe to your MQTT server messages and and you can even send messages to your devices using this um, app. Like as this app says, warning, this app is for nerds only. If you don't know what MQTT is, this app's not likely for is likely not for you. But it's very useful if you start experimenting with MQTT. So, with that very quick introduction to MQTT out of the way, and some of the, the programs and libraries and services that are available, I want to give you a quick demo, um, show you a few different MQTT examples. So before I do, I'm going to just show you a little bit about how my home network is set up so that how this works. Um, my first couple of demos here are done completely within my home network. This is a very simplified diagram of my home network where I have my wireless router. It's getting the internet connection um, from our internet service provider. And then I have a Raspberry Pi over here, which if you haven't heard of a Raspberry Pi, this is what we'll be using for our MQTT experiments. It's a very inexpensive um, small single board computer that runs Linux and it has all kinds of sensors available for it. So things like this Sensat, which is really cool. It has a gyroscope, accelerometer, magnetometer, temperature and pressure and humidity sensors. So this is a perfect way to learn about using something like MQTT, reading data from these sensors and then publishing them to a server. So we'll be using the Raspberry Pi a lot. And over here, I have this thing called a NanoPi Neo 2. Well, ever since the Raspberry Pi became popular, um, there's been a lot of different um, boards that are similar to the Pi, and this is one of them. This is a really neat little board. It's very tiny, but it's a powerful quad-core computer. And it runs Linux, of course. And of course, it can run all the MQTT software, like our Mosquito broker that we're going to use. So I'm going to use that for my first demo. So let's see. We have 
our wireless router, the Raspberry Pi, which we're not really going to use for these demos. I'm going to use that for the second video where I show you how to set up all this software. And then we have the NanoPi Neo 2. And I have my PC here that I'm actually showing this on. So as you notice, all of these have addresses associated with them. These are all IP addresses on my home local network. These are not internet addresses, so you couldn't just get on your computer and try to connect directly to mine because these are all behind the firewall in our router. So having a home network like this is very useful for doing experiments like this. So I can have my MQTT broker running on this NanoPi and I can talk to it from my PC or the Pi or whatever. And it's all kind of contained in my network here. And that's going to be an important thing too, because as we talk about um, security, I'm not really using the security features like passwords and encryptions on my MQTT server yet. And it's really helpful um, that it's on my local network and not on the internet. I wouldn't really want to use something on the internet without some sort of security measures. So anyway, let's look at the first demo. So we have this simple MQTT demo. I'm going to send data. Actually, no, not send it. I'm going to subscribe to this test temperature topic on my PC here. And it's actually subscribing to the topic on this, M this Mosquito MQTT server. This server is running on my little NanoPi computer that I showed you. And so this has the Mosquito server running. And then I'll get on and open up a little shell for this server and I'll publish temperature data to that topic. And you should see the temperature data show up on the PC. And so it's just very simple. I'm just going to use real simple command lines. So let's bring that up now and I can show you how it works. So I'm using these two shells, um, Unix command lines. So in this first one here, I have, I need to subscribe to the data. And so there's a, a nice program that we'll be using for our initial experiments with MQTT called Mosquito Sub, M-O-S-Q-U-I-T-T-O Sub. I need to tell it what address that I'm subscribing to, what where my MQTT server is located. So it's at 192.168.0.231. I need to tell it what topic I'm subscribing to. So let me type that in. Oops, test slash temperature. I can spell it correctly. Okay, so now I hit return and we're just sitting there waiting for messages to come in. I've subscribed to that topic on that server. So now over here, we're on my little NanoPi Neo 2. I've already logged in and I'm going to push or publish a message to that topic. So let's see, we're going to use mosquito sub, oh, no, that's a pub. And we can also tell it which host to use, but we don't have to in this case because it defaults to the same host that you're on, which it happens to be where my MQTT server is running, but we'll do it anyway. 192.168.0.231. We need to give it a topic, which is if we wanted the message to get to the PC, we're going to have to use the same topic. Test temperature. And we need to give it a message, the dash M. So let's say 28 degrees, 28.123 degrees. So now as soon as I hit return, you should see it over here on this one. If it works. Yep, there it is. So we can send it again. We can change the data or, and you can see it change. So that's our first very simple test of getting data from one computer to another using MQTT. So let me control C out of this one, stop it. And we can try our next experiment. So next demo is we're going to use the same setup 
We're going to subscribe on the PC. This time we're going to subscribe to test slash counter. And over here, we're actually going to run a little script that'll send an incrementing counter. And we should be able to watch the counter increment where we subscribe. So it's pretty much very similar to the last one but just shows a little more capability. Let's see here. So we want to do mosquito sub, but instead of test slash temperature, we want to subscribe to test.counter and hit return. So now it's waiting. Now over here, I have conveniently written a little shell script. Let me um, type that out so you can see it. Oops, test pub loop dot shell and you can see this is like this is written in the bash shell language which is what most linux systems use they use this bash shell so basically it's saying while the counter is less than 50 increment the counter and then publish the counter to this test counter message and then sleep for a second okay so now let's try running it Test um, loop dot shell and it's starting and you can actually see it getting the incrementing messages over here and so this will continue running for 50 seconds until until we're basically it gets up to 50 and quits so the neat thing about um, MQTT is let's say we kill the program that subscribed okay we killed it it's still sending messages over here, so we could resubscribe and it'll pick right back up where it wants to. Um, not where it wants to, but where on the latest message that's being published. And the same thing here, if we control C out of this and quit it, you can see it stops receiving messages. If we start the server again, it's just gonna start back up at one because that's just the way the program's written. So you can see that it doesn't matter if one of these two programs the publisher or the subscriber stops, the MQTT broker will just pick right back up. So that's another um, interesting way that you can use MQTT, just very simple. And we're going to use that when we get on the Pi and start publishing data using the Pi and even reading data from sensors and publishing them. That'll be in the next video. Finally, the last demo here I want to show you how you can publish data to Adafruit.io using their MQTT server. So I have a very simple Python program here, and we'll talk about how Python's used with MQTT in the next video. Um, but basically, we're going to publish a fake temperature reading to the um, Adafruit.io MQTT server, the account I have there. So first of all, let's bring up we're going to need the shell again um, on my desktop this time. And we're going to be sending, we have a program that we can send called adafruitiopub.py. So we need to run python adafruitiopub.py. And when it runs, it says it's connected to adafruit.io. It actually had to log in using my account, and now it's publishing this data. Let's switch to it real quick. You can actually see it in action here. Um, so you can see that I'm publishing 50, 55, and you can see these numbers incrementing my temperature data. Watch what happens when it hits 80. That's sort of a limit that was set on Adafruit and IO, and it'll actually turn yellow, and it'll kind of reach the critical after 100, and it'll turn red. But my program's really kind of dumb, and it just keeps going. I mean, I could do something smarter with it, but this is just a real simple demo. So that's showing you how you can kind of go outside of your own local network and publish something to one of these public MQTT servers. Okay, so let's quit this. And you can see it stops. If I started it over again, it would start back over again with 20 and it'll just keep going up. So it's really cool that um, you can do things like that. So 
that's about all I have for my demos here and my quick introduction to MQTT. On the next video, we're going to get more into how you can use the Raspberry Pi, how you can use the SenseHat, and start collecting data and publishing it using MQTT. And there's a lot of really neat things you can do. Like say you have a Raspberry Pi, but you don't have a SenseHat, you can actually use a SenseHat emulator on the Raspberry Pi. It actually emulates the SenseHat so you can pretend you have all these sensors. So in case you don't have the 30 bucks or it's hard to get it shipped to you, but you do have a Raspberry Pi, you can just use this. And another reason I like this little NanoPi Neo is it has a lot of um, neat features on it. Like there's this kit available with this board you can just plug into the Neo and it has all these sensors available like a, a, a range sensor, it has a little servo, it has sound sensor, it has a little joystick, it has some LED lights. So this makes a great little toolkit for interacting with different devices. And of course you can do all that over MQTT if you want to. So we'll play around with some more of that too in a later video. So anyway, that's all I have for now. I hope this was a good introduction to MQTT. And in my next video, we'll look at installing all this software on the Raspberry Pi and then starting to interact with some of the devices on the Pi. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.